In today's video, we are going to talk about different treatment options for prostate cancer. We're going to talk about early stage one and the stage two prostate cancer, which is a cancer that is defined to the prostate gland itself. It did not travel to the adjacent lymph nodes or the distant organs. And then we're going to talk about the treatment options for stage three prostate cancer, which is a cancer that is invading the adjacent organs of the prostate, like the seminal vesicles, but it does not travel to distant organs like the liver. Welcome everyone, my name is Rupen. I'm a certified internist both in Canada and the US and currently I'm in my training to become an oncologist. This video is a supplementary material to help your journey with prostate cancer. Please remember to always discuss your treatment options with your healthcare provider. Before diving in, let's talk about important concept that will help us understand prostate cancer throughout this video. The prostate gland and the prostate cancer is very sensitive to testosterone. Testosterone is a hormone that gives the male human being its own male characteristics. It's produced by the testicles and also this production of the hormone is maintained and governed by the pituitary gland. Now, let's talk about the treatment options of stage one, stage two, localized prostate cancer. So we have three treatment options. One, surgery, and in medical terminology, we call surgery prostatectomy, which is removing the prostate glands. Two, we have radiation therapy, which comes in two flavors, brachytherapy and external beam radiation. We will talk more about them. This is usually combined with androgen depredation therapy, which is a group of medications. The main goal of these medications is to reduce the level of the testosterone in the male body. Three, we have active surveillance. Okay, let's talk about surgery. So surgery in medical terminology known as prostatectomy involves removing the prosthetic gland. But we can do this when the cancer is localized in the prosthetic gland itself and it did not travel beyond the prosthetic gland. We have two types of surgery. We have open surgery and we have robotic surgery. Open surgery involves doing incisions around seven to 10 centimeters or like four inches in the perineal area to remove the prostate gland. The robotic surgery involves doing smaller incision in the perineal area, inserting cameras and removing the prostate. And usually the surgeon can see the prostate gland and what's going on in the pelvic area and around the prostate through a monitor. Of course, like any medical intervention, it comes with some side effects. So the common side effects of surgical intervention include one, urinary incontinence, which also means having no control over the bladder or leaking urine, two, erectile dysfunction, which are usual issues in having an erection or maintaining an erection. Of course, the complications are not related to the type of surgery itself, as much as it is related to the skill of the surgeon. So it's very important to talk to your surgeon and discuss your treatment options and what you feel comfortable with and depending also on your surgeon's experience. Then we have radiotherapy. There are two types of radiation treatment. First, we have external beam radiotherapy. Two, we have brachytherapy. External beam radiotherapy is directing X-ray toward the pelvis via a machine that usually runs around the body. This can lead to some, some side effects like pain in the pelvic region. It can lead to going more frequently to the washroom. It can lead to erectile dysfunction. It can lead to blood in the stool. These side effects are usually temporary and they can subside with time. That being said, the second treatment option is brachytherapy. Brachytherapy is delivering a radiation source via a seed or radiotherapy into the prostate gland itself. And again, Brachytherapy comes in two flavors. First, we have the low-dose brachytherapy, which usually indicates implanting, implanting rice-sized seeds into the prostate gland itself. This is usually one-time procedure. These seeds release X-ray or radiation on the long run. The other type is high-dose radiation therapy, which involves putting a radioactive source in the prostate gland itself 
and we or the ra radiation oncologists usually put this treatment into the prostaglandin for one or two days and then it removes it. Of course, it can lead to some side effects. At first, it can lead to swelling of the prostate gland, which impedes uh, emptying of the bladder, and sometimes this can lead to the need of urinary catheter to relieve the obstruction, and it can lead to urinary frequency, and it can lead to, as well, blood in the rectum. That being said, on the short run, brachytherapy does not treat your erectile dysfunction, but on the long run, it has similar side effects to external beam radiation. Now, let's move then, on. We have the testosterone and the androgen abbreviation therapy. As I mentioned earlier, the prostate cancer itself is very sensitive to testosterone. If we can suppress testosterone in the body, we can suppress the growth of the prostate cancer. We have two ways to achieve this. One is with surgery, removing the testicles, or also known as orchiectomy. This is usually not done in the current days because we have very effective group of medications called androgen deprivation therapy. These medications are very effective in decreasing the level of testosterone and suppressing the growth of the cancer itself. But it's very important to talk to your radiation oncologist, urologist or oncologist, whoever the person is giving the treatment to guide the duration of the treatment itself. For stage one and stage two prostate cancer, we usually subclassify them into very low risk and low risk or intermediate risk or high risk. So the duration of treatment really depends on multiple variables of the prostate cancer itself. With decreasing the level of testosterone, there are also some side effects that can happen. The side effects are one, decreasing the libido or decreasing the sex drive, two, erectile dysfunction, three, enlarging or enlargement the size of the breast glands in male, which is also known as gynecomastia, four, it can lead to losing the muscle mass and putting more fat. Five, it can increase the risk of type 2 diabetes. And six, it can lead to thinning of the bones and it's a condition we call osteoporosis. That being said, not everyone is going to develop these side effects. Some proportion of patients who take androgen abbreviation therapy might develop these side effects. And currently we have lots of treatment that can help to control these side effects. It's very important to talk to your healthcare provider to weigh the benefits versus the risk of the treatment and its side effects versus the stage one and stage two prostate cancer or whatever stage prostate cancer you have. And finally, we have active surveillance. By active surveillance, you're going to see the healthcare provider, whether it's urologist, oncologist, radiation oncologist, on a regular basis. And they will do physical exam, some blood work, some aging studies, to keep eye on the prostate cancer and its growth. Usually, active surveillance is very good treatment for very low risk and low risk prostate cancer. It is also good treatment for patients who don't tolerate the therapy and its side effects, or they don't want to go, uh, they don't undergo treatment. And it's very important to talk with your healthcare provider and to discuss your different treatment options to decide if active surveillance is something that fits you and fits your needs. Now, Let's talk about stage three prostate cancer. Stage three prostate cancer, it's a locally advanced cancer. So it leaves the prostate and it invades adjacent organs like the seminal vesicles, but it does not travel to distant organs like the liver. As a stage one and a stage two, we have different treatment options. We have radiation therapy and it's both flavors, brachytherapy and external beam radiotherapy. We have surgery and we have androgen deprivation therapy, but Active surveillance is not an option in a stage 3 prostate cancer. As I said earlier, radiation therapy can be done via brachytherapy or external beam radiotherapy, and this is usually combined with androgen deprivation therapy. And the treatment is usually for 18 to 24 months, but this number might increase or might decrease depending on the guidelines, depending on your situation, depending on your overall health. So it's very important to discuss this with your healthcare provider. And then, as I said, surgery is another option for stage three prostate cancer. After surgery, your radiation oncologist might choose to do radiation therapy right away. So this is called a juvenile radiation therapy, or they might choose to delay the radiation therapy and continue with active surveillance. 
So you undergo surgery and then they follow up on you with physical exam, imaging and the PSA. Once the PSA increase, then they might choose to do radiation therapy. The benefit of this approach is they might save you some side effects that can happen with radiation therapy in cases where surgery is usually sufficient. By this, we talk about the treatment options of stage one, stage two, and the stage three prostate cancer. If you are a patient who has recently diagnosed with prostate cancer, or if you're a beloved one who's diagnosed with recent prostate cancer, I'm sorry for your diagnosis, but I hope this video helped you through your journey. If you have any questions about prostate cancer or any other cancer, please leave them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer your questions. And please hit the subscribe button to stay updated. I hope this video helps you and I'm happy to be part of your